hopefully shortly um, everyone will be coming over from the three minutes so long that I had uh, started and then my phone crashed. So I'm just going to start from the beginning. Um, so basically we are going to have an ultimate jeans sew along today. I am wearing the Faro because I decided I might want to have the jeans to show you. Our ultimate jeans are our newest PDF pattern. They're called ultimate because they are, uh, we think they're very classic in that they've got a lot of the classic features to jeans. They are high waisted. And, but the great thing is they come in three styles. So you can do a mum jean, you can do a straight leg, and you can do a flared. And of course, all the sew over expertise that we have is poured into those instructions for you. So really is a brilliant pattern to, um, to do if you're doing jeans for the first time. So today, I'm obviously not gonna do one of these in the sew a long time. I'm gonna focus on the back and I'm going to do a yoke and I'm going to do um, the patch pocket and sort of sew up this crotch seam and do lots of top stitching. So we do that together. So that's what we're going to be getting on with. Um, before I start though, I just wanted to say again, and sorry those of you that were live and heard me say this already, but I'm saying it again because we're going to pretend that this is the first one. Behind me, we've got some gorgeous Mind the Maker fabrics, which we have been saving for some very special kits. So Mind the Maker is a beautiful den denim and I've got the lovely soft, uh, it's washed denim, so it's, it's really lovely and soft. We've got them in the colour here that we made Alexandra's out of, which is on our slider image on our website at the moment. And we've also got them in a dark charcoal, a light blue, and then more of a kind of darker mid blue. So lovely fabric, um, really, really high end denim fabric. So, um, and then what we feel, what we felt is with jeans is that you really need to have all the bits to go with it. It makes it easier, otherwise you're shopping for all of them from everywhere. So what we've done is we've done these kits and they're gonna be live at the weekend. So those of you on the newsletter will find out them before. So make sure you're on the newsletter. Um, heads up on that because I know recently a lot of people missed out on some Molly kits because they were only in the newsletter and they sold out really quickly. So in the kit you will get uh, jeans uh, buttons, so in the antique copper and then matching rivets. This one's open so I can't really hold it up that much but the little rivets and they do come with these little tools in there however they're not always that reliable and they'll only work with one set so we've included the very special uh, pliers, I assume they're called. Um, so yeah, torture tools. Um, so that will mean that you can put in the rivets and the buttons, but also these will work with anything. So these are prim, but they will work with other brands. And if you're putting in little snap fasteners, like you do for the, a lot of the poppy and jazz patterns, they work for those. They are really amazing thing to have in your kit. And of course will last a lifetime. Um, then also we'll be putting in zips, metal zips. So you've got the zip, I've got it all here. I remember everything uh we have got two threads here as well that we're going to include um well uh, for the top stitching so this is for the top stitching so it's top stitching thread in that classic mustard color that most jeans have and then this is for the um bar tack that you will also won't want to do at the top of the back pockets um and then we're going to put in some regular thread that i don't have just some regular machine thread and also the uh jeans um and top stitching needles that you need. So jeans needle and top stitching, they are different and I'll be talking about those today. I think that's everything. Rosie, is that everything? You also get a print out of the pattern. Ah, obviously <laughs> as well, you get a print out of the pattern. So really there's a lot in there. So yeah, keep your eyes on for the newsletter. They'll be um, on their first um, launch this weekend. I'm going to get rid of all these bits. Um, I really hope that I don't get thrown off again, guys. It doesn't normally do that. I did just get a phone call and that's why it happened. There's no way of me stopping that, unfortunately. But usually it just freezes and then it just goes and comes back. But it didn't that time. Anyway, what are we going to do? We are going to, I have got a little, I'm not going to be working from the instructions in the same order that you would to, um, guys. So there'll be a lot of chopping and changing for me of top stitching threads and needles. The reason why is I just wanted to do this section, but obviously when you're working through the jeans, you'll be doing other bits. So we've grouped it better in the instructions so that you don't have to keep chopping and changing. But I'm, I am I want to try and get a section done so I won't be doing the front and things, which is in the instructions you will. So just so you're aware, I'll be changing things quite a bit, but you hopefully won't need to do that if you're following the instructions in the order that we say. So what we're going to do first is we're going to do the pocket, the back pocket. So... The back pocket needs to be pressed over. You've got some handy little notches at the side here. I've already pressed it. Here's one I've done earlier, Blue Peter lovers. 
So we basically pressed it, I pressed it over uh, by a centimetre twice, like so. Okay, so um, annoyingly though, I've realised that I haven't, I was also doing a bit of stay stitching on the yoke just in preparation. And so now I have to take off my thread and put on my top stitching thread, but that's fine, we can do that together. I'm just gonna pop a couple of pins in there to help this stay still. I'm using a little bit of um, stretch denim here. So it's, the stretch denim does less, tend to hold the, the pressing less. So the good thing about changing between top stitching thread and not, um, and normal thread, is that the bobbin stays the same. The bad thing is we need to change the needle. So every time you're using the top stitching thread, you're gonna to need to put a top stitching needle in because the eye of a top stitching needle is much bigger to accommodate the size of that thread. I'll just put, as I put my top stitching on, actually that's the top stitching needle there. There's a lot of things I've got to remember, guys, where I'm putting them. That's that. There we go. So let's just pop that in. Hoping that I'm going to find threading needles easy today, because otherwise that's going to be a very boring sew along for you. Half the time, and me just threading needles. Oh, this is a, if only all needles were always this size. That is lovely. A top stitching needle, eye of a needle, is wonderfully big. Makes it so much easier. Okay. So. So we now need to put on an edge stitching foot. Or we could do this with a normal foot. We were talking about that before, weren't we? We could do it, sorry, I'm speaking to Rosie because she's over there. We were gonna do it with a normal and do Becca's nifty suggestion of flipping. Yeah, yes. Good. So Becca taught us a nifty suggestion where she, what we basically want to do is we want to stitch down um, eight millimeters from here, um, which is just within the centimeter fold. Um, but Becca said, well, rather than kind of using an edge stitch foot, or, you know, that's maybe not so useful actually for this because you're not going right on the edge. Um, it's better to uh, line it up on this side on your machine, work out where your folded edge is to get it to that eight millimeter spot. So I'm going to find a place where I'm like, going to be perfectly in the right point and I make sure that I'm definitely going to catch the inside fold. I've got my point there. Okay. I haven't got any tape, but I'm going to put my index finger there and hold it there. Pull this back so you can see. And then I'm going to flip it over to the right side and use that same lining, lining up point. So I know that that guide point that I've got there on my machine, but see if you've got any tape, masking tape, you can pop that on your machine to, to mark it. But I know that's going to catch it and it's going to be a good distance. So approximately eight millimetres, but if it's a millimetre more or less, that's fine. Main thing is you're catching that back fold and we're doing it with a top stitch. So definitely for a top stitch, you want to put your stitch length to three. Um, you might prefer it slightly more, slightly less. Obviously machines do vary. So you can always test it out. Um, whether that's what you, whether it's a kind of a length of stitch that you like. I think I forgot to reverse then. the top over there no need to no need to you shouldn't back stitch on top stitching thread of course you shouldn't because then it would show and not look very nice what we're going to do which i was expecting to do but i was thinking oh we'll back stitch and then pull it through we're going to leave our nice tails and we're going to pull them through so that we knock them off from the back okay there we go and from that side there we go can't see it so that's our lovely bit of top stitching. I think I might actually increase this. This is, I don't know if these will become a, um, an actual pair of jeans. Um, <laughs> well, they're not going to, because I've cut like little hot pants and not really the hot pant type. So um, it doesn't matter to me that that's not quite, I probably prefer it a little bit longer in this machine. Anyway, we've kept these threads. So what you do is you take the thread from the back, so the darker thread and you pull. And when you pull that, can you see you get a little smidgen of the, the top stitching thread, a little loop, and you pull that loop. So you put a pin in. It's very hard me doing it over here. 
if I want to be like that. Um, and then we can do a double knot. So you don't have your back stitching. Okay. That's one. And then the same on the other side. So it's a little bit of a faff, but actually I do quite like this. I remember when I was learning how to dress make and pattern cut in Italy, they used to make us do this. She was a stickler for, she hated back stitching. I like to do everything super, super neat. In fact, I was telling Alma the other day that she was saying she wasn't getting on with her buttonholes on her machine. And I was like, oh, you could hand sew them all. And she was like, oh, no. I was like, yeah, I used to have to do that in Italy. Painful task. Okay, so that's how we've got it there. So we now need to press these edges over. Okay, if you want to, you can use, uh, make yourself a little cardboard cutout. You just need to take the seam allowances off the top and off the um, sides. And then you can make that out of a cereal packet or something if you want to, to get help you form that edge. I've got a new fancy tool, guys. That we've been using at Stitch School. Which, um, Rosie's let me use for this, which is an ironing mat. So much easier than pulling up a little Ikea jobby. And also really lovely, solid, soft surface to, to work with. Okay, and you can see what I'm doing. Hopefully, kind of. So we're going to press that over. Now it's a centimetre and a half, so I'm just going to use my tape measure. I find that anything over a centimetre, it depends. It depends if, because we're being super precise with these jeans, I will check it. Um, I just want to check that I have got that exactly a centimetre and a half. I think we need a new iron because this iron's got water in it and he does not want to give me any steam. I think he's seen better days. Um, okay, so that's that. We're going to this side. This denim has literally just been lifted off the shelves. So um, it's because it's indigo, there is a lot of dye in there, the indigo colored denims. So, um, we definitely would recommend washing these denims first, particularly this dark denim. We won't need to with the Minder Maker stuff um, because I'm getting like dark fingers in the blue. Uh, okay, so now we're just going along that bottom edge as well. So I'm gonna sort of do one side up to the kind of point of the bottom of the pocket and then I'll do another. again but that lines up there we go <laughs> oh my whole body went into that iron <laughs> hey okay right just want to check then that it's in the middle I'm just going to check that it's even so checking either side up there to there yes slightly longer on that side. I'm just going to slightly adjust it. Okay. Right, so Mr. Iron can go back down. Let's go back down here. And then I'm going to take one of my legs and pop my pocket on there now i've gone ahead and already marked where my pocket which needs to go which is from the um um which is on the pattern so mark that definitely mark those top two corners um, and make sure that that's sitting in the right place i'm going to put as well think about the direction that you're going to be sewing the pocket on so you're going to be going down from the right across down up, like that so think about how your pins need to be um, so I'm going up on that side and on this side, I'm going to put my pin down. Okay, and then see if our folded space is coming into this one, making sure we're hitting that point there. Again, I'm going to just keep pivoting it around because then it will make it easier to pin and also then I'll... Um, 
um, make sure I've got the direction keeping in the same direction. Right, so the good thing is top stitching thread can stay on because we're going to do some top stitching now. So what we're going to do, let's refer to the made up pair. What we're now going to do, oh, I didn't do a second row of top stitching on that. I was meant to on the it's back. Optional. optional. It's perfect. You don't have to on the top of the pocket here. But anyway, I haven't done that one there, but I'm going to definitely do it now around these. So we're going to use two different feet to do this, guys. We've got an edge stitch foot, which those of you that have been with us a while will remember that um, I first used an edge stitch with you guys on a sew along. And then we've got a quarter inch foot, which basically stitches at a quarter inch. So I'm going to first use the edge stitch foot and then I'm going to use the quarter inch foot to do this, the second stitching on the inside. Okay. So let's pop him on. Okay, so I've increased the stitch length a little bit. I might just go back. Maybe I've been a little bit too generous with that. Now, of course, we're not going to back stitch um, here. So what I'll talk to you afterwards about what you can do, whether you do a bar tack or whether you do rivets at the top here. But because these patch pockets, if you think about jeans, you go in and out, in and out, in and out. You need that strength at the top there. So obviously just like a little neat double knot is not gonna provide that. So you definitely need to either put a rivet or a bar tuck in, but I probably won't be doing that with you today, but um, we'll talk about it in a bit, maybe at the end. Um, so just make sure you're right at the top of that corner there. You also wanna try and make sure that, that, that any raw edges from the seam allowance folded in is just really neatly tucked in. We've got to move our needle over to accommodate I'm aiming for like one, two millimetres. I think I'm just going to go a bit further in to accommodate the, um, obviously the little gap in the, uh, maybe go a little bit further actually. The little wiggle in the edge stitch foot. So the way that an edge stitch foot works, it's got a very thin plate running through the middle of the presser foot and that butts up against to the edge of your fabric and then you move your needle to the position you want to have the distance from the edge, and then it holds it in place. It's a little bit like using a concealed zip foot. You kind of, once you're set up in that position, you can't go wrong. Famous last words. <laughs> Hopefully we can't go wrong. So obviously as the pins were put in the right direction, they're being nice and easy to take out. Coming up to my first corner, and I need to make sure that I pivot at the right point. So I've put my needle in, I'm lifting up, and then I'm gonna drop down, and yep, perfect, I'm lining up right at the edge again. But obviously, just use the hand wheel to do that little bit, just to check. I can't actually see where the point is on here. It's so dark. I think I've got one more stitch to go, but I think it's, let's see. I think that's right. Very hard to see, maybe one more stitch. One more stitch. I'll do it with the hand. What you could do guys, if you're using dark denim like this, is you could mark yourself a really nice chalk point to that bottom of the pocket before you start this, and then you'll be able to spot it. Because when you're down here, it's very hard to see once the foot's there. Okay, and the same at the corners, it's hard as well. It's slightly easier at the corners. It's still a little bit tricky. Oh, something's fallen. Hopefully I don't need that. Don't know what it was. Um, and then up the other side. So pivoting at each coin corner. I'm getting an annoying thing happening where the denim is just being pushed a bit out of the way by the foot, which it shouldn't be doing. Hmm. Okay. And then stopping right at the top again. 
Okay. There we go, guys. Got to say, remember to breathe. I was feeling tense doing that. Don't know why that it makes you feel that way, but it does, doesn't it? So then what we would do is we pull those through. Um, um, I'm just going to pull them through now, but we can knock them off afterwards because we're going to do our second row of top stitching with our quarter foot. I've got some funny thing going on here, actually. It's almost pulled it through. What has happened here? Where are you, little loop? There we go. So I've got rid of my tails now to the back. And so now we're going to put on our quarter inch foot. And again, I'd recommend practicing with these before and just checking you're happy. You can practice on a little bit of a scrap. Um, so I need to move my needle back to the middle position. Oops, that's the stitch length. There we go. I oh, know, I think it's gone to the side now. I can't actually see what the middle is. No, I think it needs to just move over slightly on this. It's obviously slightly to the side. Mm, say that. Come on. I'm not actually moving. Let me just cancel. What's happened? It's sort of frozen. Okay, we're back in the middle. Let's move it back. Come on. Now it's moving. There we go. It frozen. So actually on this machine, I need to be on this needle position two, interestingly. Okay. So this is going to now, it's a bit like an edge stitch foot and it's got a plate, but the plate sits outside of the foot. And that is a quarter of an inch um, from that central, from that uh, middle knee where it's going to sew. So what we're going to do is we're going to line up the stitching, not the edge of the um, jeans, with that plate. So that I'll stitch a quarter of an inch from that, from the stitching. The tick stitching will be a quarter of an inch apart. Okay, hold your breath. <gasps> It's going, it's working. <laughs> ah! I haven't thought this through though, I should have definitely marked the pivot point because that's going to be a challenge and a half. <laughs> ah! If you mark a pivot point that's a, um, a quarter of an inch from your bottom stitching, then you'll have it nice and accurate. I am going to have to guess that. Let's see if that's right. Yeah, I think that's fine. Oh. Okay, Rosie. I'm not sure if I do. A perpendicular marker. That will show you that you're a quarter of an inch away at the front as well as on the side. Oh, yeah, it's on one side, so I guess when you're but it's not, yeah, it looks like, mm. I, might just confuse I think that would work, but maybe not on an angle. Maybe not. Maybe. I think it works if it was like you're going exactly around a corner, but if it's at an angle, he will get, because the next side goes up like that. So yeah, I think that's definitely there to help though. But yeah, because now he's still way off, but I definitely need to pivot now. Yeah. I feel like I might have gone too far, but anyway. Let's carry on. Yeah, I think it, definitely you need to mark it to make that accurate, to get that sharpness. But we're not doing badly, guys. It looks fine. It's a wonderful little foot that definitely makes this job easier, like the edge stitch foot. You know, you don't have to have these things. It's not like a zip foot where you really do have to have it to put it in, but it makes the job so much easier. Okay. Not bad. Not bad considering I didn't mark that bottom point. Great, Ooh, we've lost the thread there. So let's now knot off our threads from behind um, and pull those out. So we've got nice, neat tails. And that's the patch pocket done. So you're gonna use that kind of concept with the front as well, really, when you're doing the front pockets. Um, you can apply, apply that to, um, to those as well. And really, that's how we're doing all of our top stitching on our jeans. 
so that you get that fake double foul seam look. Much easier way of doing it. So the reason why we wouldn't do a double fell seams in the in the jeans is because then it makes fitting so much harder and alterations. You can't alter them. So um, this is a way of getting that look. Obviously this is top stitching, but when you're doing the actual leg seams, you would have a, one of your jeans seams would be, I think it's the inside leg seam is a double fell seam, usually on jeans. And we, we just do a fake one. And the same for the crotch, which we will do together. Because then, you know, you're going to need to be able to try these on. Obviously, we recommend doing a twirl for the first time, uh, unless you've got a really close-fitting pair of trousers that you know fits you well, and therefore you can apply those changes to the pattern before. But even if you've done a twirl, you should always check, obviously, at the stages that things are fitting, because different fabrics behave differently, um, and therefore make the fit different. Okay, I could probably cut these a bit shorter, leaving a big dales. So we'll come back and discuss what we'll do at the, those bits at the end. But now we're going to do the yokes. So we've done our top stitching there, lovely. We now need to change the thread. I think it was the thread that fell on the floor. Is it? Oh no, that's there. I think it was just a random other thing, probably something else from a kit. So I'm going to take this off. I'm going to pop my regular thread back on. And we're going to sew the yokes to the top of the back trouser legs. So I also need to change my needle. Okay. Put him off, take him off while I'm at it. Him, he goes back on. So back on to just a regular jeans needle, which is just a thicker ne needle that can cope with thick layers of fabric. That unfortunately does not have a large eye. So. Yeah. but it's definitely larger than a say a size 11 needle um okay right. then I realize these have dropped on the floor <laughs> we're gonna get our yoke pieces now i've already gone ahead and top stitched the top edge of my yoke which is the straight edge there so we're gonna stitch one mm. Wait a second, where are we going? There we go. You've got two notches here that will help you line those yokes up. So we're placing those right sides together. Um, make sure your notches are lined up, especially if you've got a stretched denim. It's very easy for you to stretch your denim, especially as you're going across at this point here. So we're going to sew these in place. I've got actually a bit of give the stretch there. I'm have to do a little bit of easing in of that yoke. He's stretched a little bit too much because he's a small piece and when I was probably doing the stay stitching that might have happened. So I'm going to do it on that one and also on... Where's the other one gone? There he is. And also on the other back piece. Because even though this back piece we've not done a patch pocket, you can put the patch pocket on at any point really before you've stitched the jeans kind of with the front. Um, then it'll be very fiddly once the flies in. Um, but um, so yeah, I can I could always have done this later. Patch pocket on this one, but I want to be able to do that crotch back crotch seam with you guys. Um, So I need to put these on. Okay. Seam allowance, 1.5 centimetres. I'm just going to bring my stitch. Ooh, let's cancel this again. I'm going to make sure my needle's in the middle position and I'm just going to bring my stitch length down a little bit because I don't want it quite as high as I had it. And we can now reverse because we're not top stitching. So do a nice little reverse. those threads off move on to the next one and then after this we are going to finish these seams now I don't have an overlocker set up I don't think I could cope with that on this table or near this table as well today so I'm just going to zigzag them so 
we finish these raw edges. There we go. Trimmy, trim, trim. Has always got the wrong scissors for the wrong job. That's standard me at the moment. Um, so now Ziggy Zag. Pop it onto zigzag um, and just let's bind those edges. You can increase that stitch length. That's way too close. Those are now uh, finished and so we can now press those seams and we're going to press them down towards the trouser. So on comes the nifty ironing board thing. Lovely. Love that. Definitely need to get one of those for at home. Really handy, especially for small things like this. Probably not so handy if you're pressing a whole part, big part of a garment. Okay. How are we doing for time? We're all right, guys. I'm trying to explain as much as I can while so the boring bits really quickly. <laughs> That's the challenge for today for me, so that I can get this, fit this into our hour. Um, there we go. Okay, yoky bits are on. So now, we're gonna top stitch again. We're gonna change the needles again and the thread and the press of them. How quickly can I do it? Let's time me. <laughs> it's like doing those Jamie 15 minute meals to lie down afterwards. You might be able to do it in a really short time, but it's a very stressful experience and you've used every blooming pan in the kitchen. Um, oh. I'm going to go with the edge stitch first. Edge stitch foot, foot first. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And done. I don't know if anyone was actually timing up. <laughs> I should have been counting. But that was a quick, swift change. Right, so we're now going to go back to our straight stitch. We're going to move our needle over to the position we need it to be in for the edge stitch foot. I'm going to try and remember what that is. And I'm going to move my stitch length up to my preferred top stitching length. And now we are going to, and I'm just going to refer to this just to check. Yes, we are going to do this stitch first along the top there, and then we're going to put the other foot on and do the other stitch. So we're going to line up with that yoke and back uh, trouser leg seam. We're not going to reverse because it's a top stitch and we're just going to slide along here. Annoying me, I'm getting, hopefully that's not, it's not catching in, that's good. With the first top stitch, edge stitch. I won't bother pulling my threads through this yet, yet. There we go. Okay. Then I'm going to pop him to one side, come back to my quarter inch foot. And I've remembered the needle position for that needs to be two. So then I'm going to line up the thread with the little plate on the quarter inch foot so that I stick to that quarter inch 